Ray, our COO many years ago, used to start meetings with 10 to 15 minutes of chit chat. While his intention was to promote socializing, the effect was late arrivers, difficulty in focusing at the start of a serious discussion, and low energy throughout the rest of the meeting. I've sat through meetings in which attendees fidgeted with their devices, worked on other projects, and left the room repeatedly to take other calls. Such behavior is a career mistake for the attendee and a costly time waiver for the entire organization. To end the meeting torture for all involved, whether you're a participant or a meeting leader, understand the meeting process and follow the flow well enough so that you can step into the gap and demonstrate your leadership skills as you guide a productive discussion. You'll increase your chances to end with results, not excuses. First tip, find a skilled facilitator. Either become that skilled facilitator or select a coworker on your staff to lead the meeting. Or, or ask someone in another department to trade off facilitation roles with you. You run their staff meetings and they'll facilitate yours. Don't lead meetings. Don't lead themselves. They devolve into rambling discussions. Another thing to consider. State the problem to be solved succinctly. As Charles Kettering, the famed inventor and head of research for General Motors, once stated, a problem well stated is a problem half solved. If no clear question or well-defined problem has been posed in that meeting, consider that your challenge. State it succinctly. Focus. Refocus the group's attention. Or possibly the meeting is about identifying the problem. If so, if that's your agenda, then that itself should be the focus. Three, lay the right foundation with a tell-all agenda. Start with the fact that you need an agenda. Yes, even for routine staff meetings, a meeting agenda is to a meeting what a foundation is to a skyscraper. The firmer, the better. State your agenda in question form, not topic form. And four, give a trophy to the MVPs. Announce at the beginning of an important meeting that you plan to ask everyone to toss a name in the box as a vote for the most valuable participant, the person who contributes the most in the most significant way during the meeting. If you like, you can buy their lunch for the day or a free drink. People compete not for the value of that reward, but for ego reasons. It works. And five, start and end on time, no matter what. No excuses. People believe what you do, not what you say you're going to do. If you train them to arrive late by inconsistent start times, they learn to arrive on time inconsistently. If your meetings run late, They'll feel no pressure to quash extraneous comments and repetitive rambling during the discussion. Six, stand up. People will be much briefer in their comments and pay more rapt attention when they're standing. A stand-up meeting communicates, let's get this decided and get it done. Seven, meet only for the right reasons. Consider holding a meeting just because the calendar or the clock says so is not a good idea. But do meet periodically to identify communication habits and attitudes and policies and practices that no longer work or no longer work as well as they should. Although you can get routine input in many ways, in email, surveys, phone, conversations, these issues can best be handled in real-time meetings. Brainstorming together can generate broader thinking and deeper questions that quickly become too cumbersome to handle in those other ways. In addition to what you need to update, simplify or stop altogether. Identify new opportunities and improvements in those strategic meetings. And number eight, know the return on your meeting investment. If you own the meeting, make sure you know the cost and the expected deliverables. Is it only an analysis of a problem? Are you meeting to make a recommendation, to make a decision? Is it input to pass on to another group or individual for their decision? If you don't know how 
how much your meeting cost and you don't know the expected meeting outcome, how will you know if, if and when you should have the next staff meeting? Are you earning what you want on the time and the cost invested?